Hello everyone, so today we have the first part of the crime scene investigation lab and it is about the PCR. Okay, so you are given samples of DNA and they are crime scene and suspects. So we have A, B, C and D suspects. So what we have, we have the genomic DNA. And in each tube you are going to have 20 microliters of this genomic DNA. Also from your TA you are going to obtain the mixture of master mix and primers. So the master mix includes all the salts, also the enzyme which is the polymerase and other needed stuff for the uh, polymerase chain reaction to happen. And the primers, so if you take the genomic DNA, because it's uh, double-stranded, uh, we will need two primers. So let's say we want to multiply uh, this short fragment of the DNA. So we would want to have one primer starting from here, another starting from here. And of course, when the PCR starts, it will uh, create or polymerize the, um, the sample of the gDNA, gDNA starting from this polymer uh, from, from this primer towards this end okay the same happens for this side so it will create the polymer of nucleic acids that will be complementary to the second genomic DNA strand and this will be the first uh, first row of the of the reaction so what happens next next we have four templates so first second third and fourth and we still have the same primers so these primers will attach to each of these templates and start producing the products of the reaction so in the end we will have Two to the power of cycles. So let's say that we have 35 cycles and this is the least amount of DNA that we obtain from one single genomic DNA molecule. Okay so here is why we have the primers and the master mix. So we combine them together and obtain MMP mixture. So this will be given to you by your TA and it is 125 microliters. So what you're going to do, you're going to add uh, 20 microliters of MMP to each of your samples. So to crime scene, to suspects, um, A, B, C and D. So in the end, in each PCR tube, you will have 20 microliters of your sample and 20 microliters of the MMP. So you keep everything on ice because in this master mix we have enzyme which is temperature uh, sensitive and we really want it to be intact until we put it in the thermocycler. So the th thermocycler is the machine that produces the uh, products of the PCR okay so we transfer the tubes from the eyes to this PCR machine and then we set up a new program which starts with the step one uh, which is the denaturation so we break the bonds between the two strands of DNA so that we have two templates Next we have the denaturation again and you will understand why we have two steps of denaturation. Next we would have the annealing. Annealing step is actually when the primers they attach to the templates. So after denaturation we split the double strand of DNA into two templates and on the step of annealing the primers will attach to their complementary parts so that the enzyme which is DNA polymerase starts creating a new strand here 
Oh, by the way, in your MMP, you will also have um, the nucleotides that are needed for reconstruction of the uh, double-stranded DNAs. So the 52 degrees is very specific to these particular primers. If you if you are creating your own primers, you will need to uh, identify the temperature that is most appropriate for these primers, okay? So the step is 30 seconds long and we switch to the next step, which is elongation. At 72 degree, our DNA polymerase starts the reconstruction of the strand here. So it only works when it's 72 degrees and it will do it for one minute. Usually the polymerases uh, that we use for PCR, they create, they build uh, 1000 base per minute. And it means that uh, we are kind of limited by the amount of uh, DNA that we can reconstruct during the given time. So let's say that we have 700 base pair long fragment that we want to rebuild and of course one minute will be enough but if we have 1500 base pairs of course we will need to increase this time to two minutes. Okay so the next step would be uh, going back to step two for 34 times. So it means that we jump from this part to here and it works as the computer program, um, the algorithm. And here we would go 34 times and in total we obtain 35 cycles because after the start of the protocol we already gone through one of the cycles. So total amount of cycles will be 35. Only from the first uh, gDNA, we will obtain the number of copies equal to 2 to the power of 35. It is a huge number, that's why the PCR is so sensitive. Okay, so after it's gone through the whole uh, process 35 times, it goes to the last step of the elongation. And in this case, the DNA polymerase will finish all unfinished um, strands. And the 35 times is not the limit of the number uh, of the DNA samples. It is limited actually to the capacity of DNA polymerase. So let's say that we have 1000 DNA polymerases. And this DNA pole, uh, after 30 or 30, close to 30 uh, cycles, it will wear off or denaturate, and we will be left with uh, either bad sampling or not working uh, DNA polymerase at all. That's why we usually set it to 35 to obtain everything that we could from our. Uh, DNA polymerase in our MMP. Okay, so the last step would be keeping the samples at 12 degrees. So we could set it to 4 degrees, but because of the um, characteristics of the PCR machines, um, keeping them at 4 will require much more resources of the PCR machine than 12 degrees. Okay. Um, we don't want to kill our machine before the time that it should work for. That's why we keep it at 12. Actually, we could uh, keep it at 25 degrees because the DNA is very stable and inside our PCR tube there are uh, nothing that um, actually could kill our DNA. If we want to have the best conditions for our experiments, of course we want to keep it below room temperature. What I say here is that 12 degrees is not critical for keeping our samples. And of course, many times you will not leave it overnight, I mean the PCR cycle overnight. 
you usually collect your samples and don't leave it for eternity. Now you can switch to the next set of the videos.